So if we're thinking about things that make it hard for us to hear the voice of Jesus in our lives or for the voice of Jesus to be number one in our lives, we need to think about our time. Now, if you uh, saw, I think, the second video we did, uh, you hopefully have been paying attention to how you spend your time and what you spend your time doing, how much time you give to, to prayer or to reading the Bible or how much time you give to other things that matter to you. And hopefully you've been maybe writing down how you use that time. And I want us to think particularly today about the word intentional, about how we can be intentional with our time. You see, habits are funny things, aren't they? Because we can form habits over time. Uh, And there are habits that just seem to have just happened in our lives because of something we do uh, over and over again. And maybe we haven't noticed that they've become habits, but they have. I mean, there are habits that maybe we've intentionally formed, things that we have deliberately made into a habit. And habits can be really good things as well as bad things. We often think of habits as being bad things, but they can be good as well. We can have healthy and good habits. But habits don't just happen by accident. And the question is that if we're in a season where uh, we're not in a habit of hearing from God, or we're not in the habit of spending time, intentional time with Jesus, then we need to be intentional about making that time. And it can be hard sometimes to do that, because it requires effort on our part. Time with God is never really going to happen just by accident. It's not going to be something that just happens naturally. Now of course we want to be in a position where our lives are are lived in such a way that we are praying without ceasing or acknowledging Jesus in every moment of our lives but even so even if that is the case intentional time quality time with Jesus is still really important in our lives. It's important that we make time to spend with Jesus, to develop and strengthen and deepen our relationship, as with any relationship. As we said before in the example of marriage, we need to be intentional about making time for one another. And often one of the things that people say is, oh, maybe I'll find more time when when work is quieter, or, or when I haven't got to commute quite as much. Maybe when I'm retired, I'll find more time. Or maybe when the, the kids are back at school, I'll find more time for God. Or maybe uh, when the kids have, have left home, I'll find more time with God. But the reality is, unless we make time for God, unless we make time for that quality relationship, it won't happen by accident. It won't happen by chance. We need to be intentional about making that time. And maybe we're someone who is in a good habit, and that's great if we've got good habits where we are in the habit of spending quality time with God. But sometimes those habits uh, that have been there in the past can, can be broken or can be replaced by something else or something can cause us to lose that habit. I mean, for example, I was somebody who used to spend the early evening with God and I I would carve out time after tea before bed uh, to to spend time with Jesus. But then we had children and my routine changed and it wasn't quite so easy to keep that habit up. And so I had to find another way. And then more recently, I was in the really good habit of every night uh, before bed, we would I would take my dog for a late night walk. And that was a great time of prayer and worship and wonder, gazing up at the night sky and seeing the glory of God and thanking God for the day and processing the day with God. And it was a wonderful time in my day, a guaranteed time every single day. But then we lost our dog just before Christmas and... Suddenly I wasn't having that nightly walk and something that had become a habit was suddenly just gone. And so I have to find new ways to spend time with God. Another good thing for me is is cycling, spending time out in the open air and again in worship and wonder. And when I'm cycling, I'd often use that time to pray. But January and February has been raining a lot and so I haven't had that time. And if I want to be spending intentional time with God, it's not going to happen by chance. I have to be intentional about making that time, about making God a priority in my life again. And finding a different way 
to do that, to recognise this season of life that I'm in. A season where actually, although so many ministry things aren't happening by homeschooling, I, I'm busier, I think, than I, I, I remember ever being, <laughs> but in, in a very different way. And so finding time is hard, and so I need to make time for God. You see, when you read the Gospels and you read about Jesus's relationship with Father, and obviously his example is by far the best, Jesus was constantly surrounded by people, people vying for his attention, people praying and asking for miracles, people wanting to be taught by him. He was often surrounded by crowds and and he knew that, that time with God, time with his father wouldn't happen by accident. He had to make time. And so often he would withdraw to a quiet place, whether that's pushing a boat out into the middle of the lake or, or climbing a mountain or finding time late at night when everyone else was in bed or early in the morning, moving himself away from the disciples in order to have quality time with his father. He would make that time. And if we want to make the voice of Jesus the loudest one in our lives, then we need to be prepared to make time. So hopefully by now, if you've been paying attention to how much time you're spending doing different things, you can perhaps see where there is an opportunity for you to make time for Jesus. And if you're out of the habit of doing that, then we need to be realistic. Don't expect that you're going to spend four hours in prayer, uh, but, but just to find some space and some time where you can make Jesus your priority in that moment. For a few moments, just setting aside the time. And, and when you first do it, maybe you won't hear the voice of Jesus because there's a lot of unraveling that needs to happen. Maybe some removing of distractions of, of our thoughts that will go to all kinds of places, particularly if we haven't given God that much time recently. There's going to be some things that need to be worked through in order for us to be able to hear his voice. But if we're not making time for him we can't expect that time to happen by accident or to happen spontaneously we need to be prepared to make time for him to be intentional about it having good intention isn't enough doing something with that intention is what we need to do to choose to make time and for you maybe that might even mean physically putting it in your diary saying that on that particular time of that particular day you're going to set a reminder on your phone and you're going to move aside and you're going to spend time with Jesus intentionally maybe reading the bible uh, maybe praying maybe a bit of time of worship or listening to a podcast about uh, things of God whatever it may be but we need to be intentional about doing that until it perhaps becomes a habit you know, it takes time to form habits. Habits don't form overnight. And so until something becomes habitual, we need to in be intentional about creating that time and that space for quality time with Jesus. And so I encourage you as you continue to pay attention about how you spend your time. How can you make time for Jesus today or in the days ahead? How can you find time, as Jesus did, to withdraw yourself from the busyness of life and to make him your priority again? Grace and peace to you as you seek to find ways to intentionally do that today. Amen.